The coronavirus is spreading fast going from one country to another and soon it will be in every single country of the world. Up until now we've had uh, a bit more than officially a bit more than a hundred thousand infected and in the and and thousands of deaths but reality is that there's no end in sight for this pandemic and within a very short period of time we, we will see millions of people uh, affected by this and at the end of and at the end, end of its course millions of people will uh, or could could have passed away due to this uh, disease now this presents for us the situation presents for us the biggest dislocation in society on a world scale since uh, world war ii and the amazing thing is that the ruling class around the world appears to have no plan whatsoever to, uh, of, to how to come out of uh, how, how to come out of this crisis in the u.s for many weeks now donald trump has been minimizing the threat pretending basically saying that this is not gonna uh, come to the u.s there has been zero preparations of the healthcare system. Uh, the, uh, the the procedure of developing a test and uh, uh, distributing it throughout the U.S. has has been met with uh, with a lot of difficulties. And furthermore, when this thing hits the U.S., which is which is happening at the moment, millions of people are gonna be in a very very difficult situation because they don't have uh, health insurance uh, basically, uh, and uh, and they will be left to fend for themselves. Uh, hundreds of thousands, millions of other people could could end up in huge uh, debts, and uh, in that sense, the the it's clear that the U.S. ruling class has, is going to leave the American workers and poor uh, to themselves. Meanwhile, at the same time, immediately as the stock markets begin to react to this, uh, the the uh, the Federal Reserve comes out with a 1.5 trillion uh, economic stim stimulus package basically a package to hold their hands under the uh, rich to support big business uh, big companies the banks uh, and, and so on uh, the effects of this the final effects of this uh, results of this we, we don't know yet but it will definitely have a huge impact on uh, US uh, politics uh, and uh, this thing that has been discussed so much in the past year about free uh, healthcare, na na free nationalized healthcare essentially will be put on the agenda as the only way forward as, as, uh, as um, the, the working class and the masses in a, f in a larger extent than ever before will be able to see that capitalism is unable to deal with this situation. You have in, the, in Britain a not too uh, a, a different situation where basically apart from a few guidelines to for people to keep their distance the government has done nothing to prepare the healthcare system or to avoid the further uh, spread of this disease in fact uh, Boris Johnson yesterday was out in a very cold and cynical manner explaining that well people have just just have to prepare themselves to lose their loved ones uh, of course uh, the, the the rich are going to have far better uh, um, far better conditions and are going to have access to private health care and, and conditions which the vast majority of the people will not. The NHS, which has been drained, has, has been cut, privatized and outsourced for decades, will not be able to deal with the amount of, <coughs> of uh, ill and disease which are going to come. In, in the next period, which means that hundreds of thousands of people could stand to lose their lives in Britain, all because of the complete uh, in, uh, incompetence of the ruling class and their in, in unwillingness in reality to do anything about this fact. In, in reality, the philosophy of the British and the US and also the Swedish ruling class, uh, as, as far as we know until now, has been to just let this happen, uh, let the disease come kill as many as it can in as short a time as possible in order for these economies to come out of a, a, a recession i.e. the economic effects of the disease sooner than other ones and be clear with it and uh, some of them in fact even cynically uh, speculate that this will wipe out uh, a lot of elderly from the population which in their eyes are only nothing but a burden on the economy this is the the the, the true uh, sentiment and the, the true perspective of the ruling class. In other countries like in Denmark and Italy they've taken other, me other measures, the, the, the countries are now in, in a state of complete lockdown 
but uh, this lockdown is mainly consigned, confined to the, the, the public sector. So the public sector workplaces have been uh, closed down and people are, 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 are told to, to stay home. Small scale businesses are basically being forced to, to, to shut down. But big, big business, industries, factories and so on, and most of which are not essential in the sense that they will, you know, they provide uh, food uh, and, and basic goods, uh, are still running. Why? Because the government does not want to touch uh, their profits, basically. And we see that <clears throat> far from this idea that the governments are now uniting the nation behind them in order to defend uh, the nation and defend the people, what is really happening is that different governments, in one way or another, are merely rushing to protect. Uh, capitalism, capital, and private property, uh, and this is uh, in effect uh, uh, already beginning to undermine the legitimacy in the eyes of, of the people. In countries like Iran and uh, and China, the incompetence of the regime has also been exposed. In China, where the ep epidemic actually started out in, in in the city of Wuhan, the government denied its existence for weeks, and in fact persecuted and jailed whistleblowers, people who were talking out about this calling for something to be done they were being arrested and put in prison because the government didn't want to disturb the fragile economy of china which was already uh, uh, slowing down uh, but the, the the effect of it as we can see by not acting has been this massive disaster on on, on a world scale in iran as well the government denied the existence of uh, of uh, corona for uh, almost a month uh, for, for what? On the one hand, because they didn't want to disrupt uh, dis uh, uh, the relations with China, which is an important economic partner. And on the other hand, because they wanted a lot of people to go and vote in the parliamentary elections in order to prop up the, the, the legitimacy of, of the regime. Now, millions of people are extremely angry at, what, at the, 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 the irresponsible manner in which the regime ha, ha, has acted up until now and which it continues to do. Uh, one of the uh, most important uh, developments in Iran has been that this disease was, uh, was uh, centered and the source of it in Iran was the holy city of home and the holy shrine of home, which is a, a place where people actually go to get healed. Uh, and in this area, people were getting uh, infected with corona and the religious establishment, which is the key pillar in the state apparatus, refused to acknowledge uh, this was happening because this would undermine their religious uh, position. Even to this day, they are basically minimizing the threat of corona, calling for mass, mass gatherings, calling for Friday prayers to continue to be uh, uh, held in spite of uh, health uh, healthcare professionals' uh, guidelines. Uh, in order to protect this, and in doing so, they're putting millions of, of lives uh, uh, at, at risk. Already now, I mean, officially, the government of Iran is saying that there's about 10,000 uh, uh, ill and a few hundred uh, dead by, by, the, by this disease. But the reality is far, far worse. The, the real figures could already be upwards towards 100,000 uh, uh, infected and uh, thousands of people who, who have been uh, killed. All of these things serve to uh, undermine the legitimacy of, of the people, that, uh, of, the, sorry, of the governments. There's enormous amounts of anger amongst the people against the ruling class. In fact, I would say in a country like Iran, there, there, is, a, there is a revolutionary mood under the surface. The only problem is that people cannot come out because of this, uh, because of the disease, because of the risk of, uh, of contagion. And a lot of people are too busy merely trying to keep their lives together, uh, uh, trying to find money somehow because the economy is, is collapsing and, and trying to stay alive. But that doesn't mean that this is forgotten. All of this will remain and accumulate on top of years and years of, of accumulated anger. And at a certain stage, it will explode in a, in a, in a revolutionary manner. And, in, uh, and, and then the, the, the days of the regime will be numbered. Now, the effects of, the, uh, of all of this on the world economy has also been very, very important. Uh, we saw yesterday the, the Dow Jones had the worst, they had a 10% decline. It was the worst day in the, in the history of the stock exchange since 1987. This is after a week of, 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 of sharp falls in oil prices and commodity prices and stock prices and, and, and so on. The Chinese economy, it is believed by many people to already have, be in a recession or have, be at zero growth for, for the, growth for this quarter at all. In order to come out of the... Um, 
the epidemic, in order to contain the epidemic, basically one billion people uh, stayed home from work in China and industry was, was not functioning. But even now, as many industries are beginning to, 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 to resume work again, although it's by far the, the majority of, of the economy yet, uh, but even now that they've started resuming work, there's not any orders because the rest of the world is going into a recession and there's constant dislocations taking place and disruptions taking place um, uh, in supply lines and it basically there is a, there's a collapse of demand coming from, from the West, which is China's main export uh, uh, partners. So we see here that the second uh, biggest economy of the world is now in, in, in a, a, essentially in a, a, a declining economic growth. And this will, uh, this will uh, increase and accelerate in the next period. We've already seen Lebanon has, uh, has defaulted. Other countries could follow. Uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, Russia are in a, 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 a war over oil prices. And as oil prices are plummeting, along with other commodity prices, we're going to see many, many governments being in a very tight situation. Russia is in serious risk of, uh, of, of defaulting. Many Middle Eastern countries, countries which are dependent on oil uh, prices, will be in a similar situation. In fact, Iran had to, for the first time in its history, ask for a $5 billion loan from, from, from the World Bank. Uh, and so what we see now is just the first tremors of what is to come, of mass recessions, defaults, uh, uh, and a huge economic crisis, and essentially a crash uh, coming out of this. Uh, and uh, weighing down uh, with the world economy being basically flatlining for a, for a prolonged uh, period. And the point is that whatever they're trying to do is not going to help. The effect of the crisis is such, the effect of the virus is such that uh, economic stimulus has only limited effect because you cannot stimulate demand. You cannot force people to go out, to go to the cinemas, to go to the cafes, uh, uh, to, to travel and so on because they're afraid of, uh, of, of catching uh, the virus. And this will continue for a uh, for at least a, a year if if not more and hence all of these measures will not really mean anything would not would not really be that effective and the world economy will go into a deep uh, 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 slump. Of course, everyone is saying now, uh, or politicians at least, uh, are blaming all of this on the coronavirus. But in reality, all of the contradictions which is leading to this crisis was, was prepared in the past few decades, in fact. The, the contradictions which led to the 2008 crisis, as we as Marxists have explained on many occasions, were not resolved. The only way that the capitalist class overcame that that crisis was by uh, building up huge debt bubbles and basically by debt financing by by public by increasing uh, debt in society in, in particular public debt but all of that debt has to be paid back and now that debt is is playing the role of of a of basically dragging down the world economy as it, as it spir spirals uh, down and uh, being and, and it's becoming an obstacle for any uh, serious type of uh, revival in the in the economy. So in that sense, the the coronavirus was an accident in a, in an economic sense of the word, an accident revealing the underlying con uh, uh, contradictions in capitalist uh, society. But again, because of the particular nature of this virus, it means that it will play a depressing role on the economy and any attempts to intervene by the bourgeois to alleviate or to channel and control and manage this, uh, this, uh, this crisis uh, because, because it will continue to haunt uh, societies in the foreseeable future because there's no, uh, uh, there's no perspective of any uh, vaccine being developed at least for, for a year. Some people say a year and a half, it could even be uh, longer than that. We can't know that. And this means also on a world scale that we're going to see uh, uh, the, the rise of mass poverty, mass unemployment, uh, unseen, unprecedented in the post-war uh, uh, period, which will again lead on to uh, a, a mass uh, or be a source of mass radicalization. Uh, consciousness in reality is an extremely uh, conservative thing. Ordinary people want to spend uh, their days and their lives just like they did before. They want a continuity uh, and they, they stick to routines and ha try as much as possible not to part ways with them. But uh, under the impact of great events such as wars, revolutions and crises, they, they are thrown in, out of this, uh, this state of uh, routinism and they're forced to take uh, to restock or reevaluate 
uh, the, the 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 views on the, on the world um, once again, and that's exactly what this will this the, this new situation and this new period in world history will mean. That you're gonna see that everything that people took for granted, from the smallest everyday habits to national uh, 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 traditions, all of that is gonna be shaken up. And it's going to be disturbed, and people have to reevaluate their views of them. And in doing so, the, the, the consciences will develop, of course, while at the same time, the contradictions between the interests of the ruling class and the masses will become clearer um, by the day. As I said, in Iran already, you have a, you have a revolutionary mood developing in society. The anger against the whole of the regime, and in particular, I would probably uh, say against the clergy, is 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 enormous. This clergy, who is supposed to uh, defend the pe the people and so on, are coming out basically acting, being complicit in what's seen as as, as criminal uh, behavior by the ruling class, which is uh, risking the lives of ordinary uh, human beings. Um, people are forced to 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 choose between working or to catching a disease. There was a uh, there was a, there was a man uh, recently. There was a story on on, on Twitter about a, a a guy who was a taxi driver. He couldn't give up his job because otherwise he couldn't feed his family. But at the same time, he couldn't go home either in the evenings because he he was afraid of uh, of uh, uh, infecting them. So therefore, he was driving his taxi during the day and uh, and sleeping in it uh, during uh, the, the the night. In Italy, we already also see a, 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 a very very angry mood developing, especially amongst nurses and doctors who are at the front lines, who see the incompetence, the greed and the, 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 the unwillingness to actually do anything to help of the ruling class, of the establishment. And on the other hand, also in the private sector, where people are, f are basically forced to work without any, uh, 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 without proper safety um, Equ equipment without proper safety measures and there's in fact there's a wave of strikes demanding that the the the, the, the authorities uh, and the and the owners of the of the factories and so on implement proper uh, safety measures now all of these things are anticipations of what we're going to see in uh, the, the future you see the the the, the process we're going to experience is probably going to be very similar to a war like situations like in, like the first world war uh, as Lenin once said, all wars start with a wave of patriotism and end with a wave of, uh, of, of revolution. And it, we're going to see a similar situation now. People are going to people are going to are going to come together, uh, and the the ruling class, the politicians, are going to be largely successful in creating a feeling of national unity that everyone is just going to help out, do their part, take what's coming to them because it's necessary and because it's temporary. But gradually, people will begin to to realize that it's not it's it's not that's not true. In fact, a lot of these things is not to defend and protect the. The, the masses, but it's to uh, defend and protect uh, private property. And at that point, you begin to see that this this inertia and this relative passivity that we see is going to turn into to, to anger and revolutionary e explosions will be on the on the agenda. Um, we shouldn't forget that uh, at the end of World War II, we had a whole series of revolutions sweeping throughout uh, the world, and that's the, and the same was at the end of uh, uh, World War One. Um, of course, natural disasters such as the coronavirus or the, the, the climate uh, 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 changes that we see and the, the disasters related to that uh, happen. But the, but the problem is that the system of capitalism is organically incapable of dealing, uh, dealing with these things. As we see at every single step of the way, the authorities have been incapable of dealing with the, with the coronavirus because uh, that's not in their interest. Capitalism is not a, 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 how do you say, a democratic system organized for the benefit of society as a whole. The main driving force of capitalism is the drive for profit of the tiny uh, group of parasites who own the means of production. I mean, if, if you look at it everywhere, all governments essentially have had two aims or one aim is to, to, to protect private property in this crisis but uh, which has reflected itself in a twofold manner on the one hand they want to appear to be doing something in order to stop mass radicalization and social uh, uh, unrest 
And on the other hand, they will do everything they can to protect uh, their own national uh, uh, capitalist uh, classes, basically. And in doing so, they've, they have, uh, they have uh, uh, at every single turn of events, Fail to stop this e epidemic, like in, in in China, where the, the, it was it was left to fester for almost a month. In Iran uh, and in, in Britain and the U.S., where the same thing is basically happening, the governments is, uh, are just allowing it to happen in order to safeguard the interests of big business uh, and big uh, capital. In that sense, the coronavirus is, is again an accident, but an accident which is bringing out all of the contradictions in the whole of the, ca of the capitalist system. And that's what we're going to witness in the next period. We're going to see crises on an economic level, on a social level, on a political level, on a diplomatic level. The, in, the, 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 the tensions between nations is, 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 are going to increase, but it's not going to be due to the coronavirus itself, but it's going to be due to the, to, to, to the underlying contradictions of the system as a whole which are which are crashing onto the surface so to say uh, um, sparked by by the virus itself I think the choice before before humanity is is clearer than ever uh, today is socialism or barbarism this system is not capable of guaranteeing anything but horror without end for the millions and millions of, of, of workers and poor uh, in the in the world and as the move, as the as the crisis drags on, they will come to realize this, and we will witness great revolutionary battles uh, to overthrow the system once and for all, uh, and all of the, the the ills and the scourges that come with it.